Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> good morning. Welcome to Morning Cup of Jesus. I'm your host, Minister Edward Broom. I apologize, man, for starting up late. Uh, I went live, but there ain't no excuse. I still was like two, three minutes behind, even though I thought I was live. It wasn't live. And um, I just got to get it together, man. Y'all pray for me. Help me get it together. But without any more delay, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? Father God in heaven, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, for waking me up this morning, God. I thank you that my family made it back home safely, Lord God. <clears throat> I thank you, Lord, for um, for the progress that's coming along with the with the house getting moved and everything, Lord, uh, getting things squared away. I thank you for my strength, Lord God, to be able to do the things that are that are needed, that are necessary. I thank you for my for for God for my mind, God, uh, for enclosing me in my right mind, Lord, that I may uh, live to serve you, to worship you, to do your will, to please you, God. I pray, God, that you would cause all of us, Lord God, to, to live for you, to live for your purpose, God, whatever that purpose may be, and not for ourselves, Lord God, not for the world, but but God, to, 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 to make you say, well done, to make you proud of us, Lord God, to, to be pleasing in your eyesight, Lord God. And God, I pray this morning that you would move me out the way, and God, just have your way, Lord God, uh, let nothing be done but your will, Lord. Speak to us, Lord. Your servants are listening, Lord. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. All right. Today's scripture is coming from the book of Acts, chapter 11, <clears throat> verses 26 through, no, Acts 11, verse 19 through 26. And look at that screen there. Acts, chapter 11, verse 19 through 26. Now, those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. But some of the, them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene who, when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, 
and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Then news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all that with purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. Then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people, and the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. May the Lord bless the readers, the hearers, and especially the doers of his holy word. A great number, a great many people. <clears throat> Just the phrase, and a great many people. So that phrase right there in that order was, we use right here in verses 19 through 16 of chapter 11 in the book of Acts. It says a great many people, then a great number of them, there are a great many people. And so, uh, and so that's the goal. That's the goal. That a great number, a great many of a great many people, unable to be counted, believe and turn to the Lord. That's the goal. Sometimes the Lord sends trouble, storms, and hardship. But it's okay as long as a great many people turn to the Lord. Sometimes the Lord sends pain, shame, and distress, but it's okay as long as a great many people turn to the Lord. Um, when they were going out and, and sending, when they were going out and sending people out, they had one goal. The goal was for the people to hear the gospel of Jesus, believe the gospel, turn to the Lord, and be saved. That's one thing they wanted. To, they were going out and sending people out. They want they want them to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, believe what they had heard about Jesus Christ, uh, 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 turn away from their sins, turn to the Lord, and be saved. That was the goal. That is the goal. That's always going to be the goal. My go-to scriptures: First Timothy chapter two, verse three and four. And this is good in the eyes of God. Who desires that all men be saved? God desires that all of us be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. And then that and that the knowledge is that there's only one Lord, Jesus, huh? Who gave himself as a ransom for us. That's the only that's the truth right there. And God wants everybody to know that. That's his goal. My other scripture, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. God is patient with us, not willing. Not willing that any of us should perish, but that all of us should come to repentance. That's that's the goal. That's God's desire. Since that's God's desire, that's the goal. That's the goal. If your desire is to win the game, if you want to win the game, then that's the goal. To go and play the game, to win the game, no matter what it is. If you're playing a sport or something, and your goal is to is to be victorious. That's the, 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 no. If that's your desire to be to get the victory, then you make that your goal and you go towards it. Now, given when I'm sometimes playing a game, some with my daughter, my little girl, I, I uh, the goal is not my, my desire is not always to win, is to have fun. So we might be playing Mario Party or a little uh, or the or the Bible game. One is a board game, one is a video game, and I I might be uh. I might be having fun just tearing her butt up. But I know I want her to be happy. So it's my desire to just have fun and be happy. And at, at the, by the end of the game, what I do is throw the game. <laughs> you know, I be winning the whole time. Then I throw the game near the end and, and let her win. So she can be happy and have a good time. I can be happy. She, I can be happy and have a good time. I'll get her, cause that's my desire. For her to be for to to make her happy, to please her at that time. So I throw the game at uh, most time. I don't always throw the game. Sometimes I kick her butt and be like, "Uh huh, I won. I'm the winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner." But if your desire, if God, no, if, if if your desire is to please God, 
God's desire is for people to be saved. So you should make that your goal, however you do it. You can do it through singing, through uh, buying people stuff, through ministering uh, your voice, through, uh, through your testimony, through playing instruments, through, through sports, through video, whatever, whatever you do to draw people to the Lord Jesus Christ. That should be your goal since that's God's desire. Your desire has to line up with God's desire. Your will has to line up with the will of God in order for you to, to live the, the life that God wants you to live. And so, so the, their goal is for people to hear the gospel, believe the gospel, turn to the Lord, and be saved. But turning to the Lord is not merely saying that you have turned to the Lord. We we briefly spoke on it yesterday at the men's meeting, but turning to the Lord is not saying, yes, I've turned to the Lord. Mm -mm. Turning to the not, turning to the Lord requires turning away from something or someone else. Let me hear that, say that again. Turning to the Lord requires you to turn away from something and or something else. And um, that is the meaning of repentance. See, that's what his word repentance comes in the picture. Having a change of mind about sin, turning away from sin, and turning to the Lord for salvation from sin, that's repentance. Changing your mind, saying, you know what? The Bible says this is wrong. That's wrong. You know, the Lord Jesus said this is wrong. He said this is sin, so that's sin. My, my people taught me this growing up, but... This is not in accordance with biblical doctrine. So I'm going to turn away from what I was taught. I'm going to turn to what Jesus Christ teaches us and, 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 and turn to him for salvation from those things. But you have, you must believe. If you don't believe it, you're not going to receive it. If you don't believe, you're not going to receive it. You're not going to repent. Uh, it is impossible with, to please God if you don't have faith. If you don't have faith, you must believe God. You must believe that he, he exists and that he, he rewards those who seek after him. Diligently, diligently, wholeheartedly, sincerely. Uh, so, so, turning, uh, so repentance is turning away from sin, having a change of mind about sin, a change of heart about sin, and, 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 to, and to discontinue your, your justification for your actions. See, when the people say, well, I, uh, Jesus understands, you ain't repented yet if Jesus understands and you think that it's okay. Man, when you truly repented, when you have truly repented, it hurts you to sin. It, you, it make, it make, it'll cause you to go nuts. Committing sin, knowing that it's wrong will cause you to go nuts. Who has a conscience where they can go and continue walking down a road knowing it's the wrong road without ever having conviction? in their spirit that says, hey, man, stop walking down this road. What are you doing? Are you an idiot? Who who, 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 who has a conscience where they can continue sinning and your, and your heart, your, your spirit, man, doesn't convict you and say, hey, stop what you are doing. This is foolishness. If you, if you're, but Jesus says, but the word of the Lord says, their hearts have seared. Jesus even said, um, uh, uh, uh whoo, he even said the word of God even said that they uh they they so that they don't believe so that, and so that they don't believe and they don't uh understand and be saved. Some people have been given the heart and the mind so that they don't believe and they don't hear and they don't understand and they don't and they don't get saved. Glory to God for not giving me that kind of heart. Even if I had it at first, when I started searching for God. I realized God was there the whole time. God was already there the whole time and, and just there. I just had to start looking for him and be like, wait a minute, God, you were there. You were there in my life. You were there in my life. You, were, He was there all the time. And I may have, have had a heart then that uh, was a, a heart of stone then. But after I started searching for God, he replaced that heart of stone with a heart made out of some good tender flesh. Good tender flesh that that received him. Now, as I said uh, a few days ago, um, I could have uh, I could have seared my heart harder and and, and took and and, and 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 tried to take glory, self glorification, 
self honor respect for the for the stuff that I was in jail for. But I could have said, well, you know what? Yeah, I'm in here. Uh huh. I did it. Uh y'all. Yeah, what? Uh huh. Uh huh. I do it to you too. You know, I could have did all that. That was an honor back then. Going to prison for something, getting catching bodies, doing crime, committing crime, and and that was an honor. You know what I'm saying? It was an honor. I mean, not going to prison for a long time now, but some people are. Uh, they're like, yeah, they, oh yeah, my brother been to the penitentiary. You know, it was something to brag about. Yeah, I've been to the penitentiary. It was something to brag about. You know what I'm saying? Cause, but right now the penitentiary wore it down. They got, they probably give you iPhones and tablets and all everything you want up in there to make your stay more comfortable. And so therefore, people going back and forth for the because it's comfortable in there. They just messed up and got caught. And they said, well, it's comfortable. Go on in here and be comfortable for a little while. Versus what pen, what prison should be, which is very uncomfortable, harsh and cruel, and 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 and, and a punishment, as a, or a chastisement to correct your ways. The prison should be to chastise you and correct your ways. Thank you, Jesus. That, yeah, I take I scratch the word punishment. Okay, prison should be chastisement that causes you to change your ways. But now it's just a. A little stepping stone as you step across. <laughs> it ain't even that high. It don't even take you high. It don't take you lower. You just got to walk up to it. It holds you up for a little while. And you step across it and you're right back to what you're doing before you went to prison. Let me get off of prison. So repentance is what we're talking about. All the people went out. They went. They were going out and preaching the gospel. People were believing. A great many people turned to the Lord. A great number of people turned to the Lord. A great many people, they preached to a great many people. They taught a great number of people that was the goal. And that great and then and, and that goal caused repentance. Because repentance is key. Repentance is key. It's the it, repentance is a key component of being saved. Because the first thing you have to realize is that you're being saved from your sins, from the penalty of your sins, from the power of sin, and later on from the presence of sin altogether. You know what I'm saying? You're being saved from your sin. And so you must repent and have a change of mind about your sin, about her sin, about his sin, about their sin, about our sin. I hate sin. I don't care who doing it. I hate it. I'm never going to tell somebody it's okay to do it. I remember at one point, I remember at one point, uh, a brother came to me. Uh, he was uh, he was married. Uh, and um, I think he was telling me, yeah, I'm going to go to my girlfriend. I'm like, what's going on with your wife? His wife lived with another man with her boyfriend who she was messing with. And he was messing with another girl. And I was like, bro, now nah, I'm, I'm, I should, probably shouldn't have said it. You know, that was about this 2024. That was probably uh, five, over five, over five years, five or six years ago. And I told him, I said, man, y'all need to get divorced. You know, that was just how I looked at it. I said, you need to, you can't be married to her and, live, and living in a house with another woman and sleeping with another woman. And she can't be married to you living in a house with another man and sleeping with him. I should, I, maybe I shouldn't have told them that. Him that, not them. Maybe I should have told him, bro, you need to reconcile with your wife. Stop cheating. Con convince her to stop cheating. Persuade her to stop cheating and reconcile. Get back together. Now, whoo, thank you, Jesus. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, no divorce unless it's sexual immorality. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Maybe that's why I didn't convict me. I said I probably shouldn't have said that, but I don't condone sin. Telling somebody to, to, to get married, I mean, to to end their marriage, to get divorced, would be a sin under all circumstances unless Jesus Christ says it's not a sin. Now, he says sexual immorality. Maybe that's why the Lord had put them. Maybe that's why my heart wasn't grieved about that. And they are divorced now. And, uh, I, you know, and I, they, I think they married to different people. But maybe that's why the Lord didn't grieve my heart for me telling him that. Because now that I just realized um, that there was grounds for a divorce. She had, she committed adultery. He committed adultery. Stop committing adultery. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But when I, but, but I did tell him to stop. I told him to stop committing adultery. I said, she don't probably be doing it either. But I, but as I was saying, I don't condone sin. That's one time when I know that I told somebody to do something and I kind of thought it was wrong at the time, but now I see it. it that's why it ain't bothering me because it, 
it wasn't wrong if those were grounds for a divorce. Now, Jesus said, uh, I mean, the Lord said, if you can get back together, get back together. And so if you can, if you can patch up your marriage, you can fix it. Go for what the Lord knows, because uh, the Lord can do all things. You know, I, with, with us, things are impossible. What, but with God, things are possible. And so I'm telling you, I don't condone sin. I was going to say at one time I, I condone it. I don't condone it then. I don't condone it now. I'm never going to condone sin. I don't care who commits the sin. And that's and that's the thing with what the Lord wants us to see, that we are sinners. We must have a change of mind about sin, must stop justifying it, must stop uh, enjoying it, must say, I hate this stuff. I'm, I don't think this stuff is right, no matter how it, good it makes me feel. It feels good, but it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? Because sin feels good. Most of the time, a lot of times, it don't always feel good. Sin, I mean, even while you're doing it, if you have a conviction I have, even while you're in the midst of sin, it don't feel good. Now, there are a lot of sins that do feel good. But some sin just don't even feel good while you're doing it. You, you just stop doing it and say, Lord, I'm sorry, man. Lord, I, Lord, I, what was I thinking? You know what I'm saying? So this was the goal, to get people to realize that sin is wrong, that they are sinners, and that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to get away from their sin. You can't walk away from your sin yourself. You can't, you can't cleanse yourself. You can't do enough. Uh, 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 animal sacrifices or anything or pay enough money to wash away sins. Some uh, denominations believe you put enough money, you can pay for sins of yourself or somebody else or something. I don't know what that stuff you're talking about. Man, I don't know where it come from. Uh, you know, but I tell you what, Jesus is the only way. So I had some questions are on the table. I, have you repented? That's a question. That's one question. Have you repented? Now that you know what repentance is, and the Bible says repent, repent, repent. Repent means to turn away from it, to have to, to, to turn your mind away from how you felt about it when you thought you were right in it. When you thought it was good, when you thought it was right, when you justified it, repentance means to, to remove all the justification, remove all the self-righteousness about sin, to remove all the thoughts about sin that say it's not sin. Remove all the thoughts about... All, Everything from your heart about sin that says it's okay to do it. That's what repentance is. Have you repented? Have you changed your mind about sin? Or, there's an or, number one, have you repented and have you changed your mind about sin? Or do you still justify sin? Not just yours, but anybody. I'm not telling anybody it's okay to sin. I don't care who it is. I have a passion. I have a passion, man against sin. <laughs> I'm at war with sin. Early in the morning, five something in the morning, I'm at war with sin. And don't don't let you come around the corner with sin. Don't you come around the corner walking with sin. I'm at war with you as long as you with sin. If you now I ain't saying I'm at war with you because if you uh commit sin, if you are with see people can commit sin but don't be with sin. You against it. I'm against sin. I still sin. I'm not for sin. I'm against sin. And I still fall short. Nobody's perfect. I, when I fall short, I hate it. I hate when I fall short. I hate when anybody falls short. I'm trying to teach my children, I'm trying to teach my wife, I'm trying to teach my family to hate falling short of God's glory. That's what I want them to do. Hate falling for the devil's scheme. Hate falling to the devil trap. Hate listening to the enemy when he tell you, yeah, go ahead and do it. Hate enjoying sin. Hate feeling good after you've completed your sin. Hate reminiscing on your sin and wanting to go back to it again. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Hate it. That's what we need to do. Hate everything that the enemy comes up with. Everything he thinks of. Everything he created. Everything he pushes us toward. Everything he whispers in our ear. We have to hate it and love God. How do you love God? By keeping his commandments. If you try to keep God's commandments, if you love God so much where you try to keep his commandments, you're going to eventually say, Lord, I can't do it, man. You just come on, take me with you, Lord. I'm going to hold on to your hand, Lord Jesus. And so when I get up to something, I'm going to turn on my head over and say, ask you what to do about it. 
I'm going to hold your hand, Jesus, in every situation that I walk up to, every, every everything that, that I encounter, I'm going to ask you, what do you think I should do about it? That's walking with the Lord, holding his hand, anything that you encounter, you say, Lord, what do you think I should do about it? What do you desire me to do about it? God, what should I do about it? Not what would Jesus do about it, because Jesus had all power. He can do what he wants to do about it. Jesus, what do you want me to do about this thing right here? That's walking with the Lord. So have you repented and changed your mind about sin, or do you still justify sin? What is yours or a loved one's, or do you justify sin? Here's another question. Have you turned to the Lord, or are you still waiting for the right time? Huh? Have you turned? Remember, turning to the Lord requires you to turn away from something else. In order for you to turn to the Lord, you have to turn away from those things that are not of the Lord. See, and you can and you can all at once say, man, this stuff is not of the Lord. If you didn't have the word of God, I would understand. But you have the word of God that says, don't do this, 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 this. Now, you might fall into those things. But what you can say is, well, I don't want to do those things, Lord. Turn away from those things. I'm going with you, Lord. I'm going to go with you, Lord. I think that you're right. I think that I'm wrong. All that stuff I was doing was wrong. I'm going with you, Lord. That's turning to the Lord on your right side, turning from or away from the sin, the things of the world, the stuff that is against the Lord. Either you're for God or against God. You cannot serve two masters. Either you're going to love one and hate the other, or you're going to hold on to one and let go of the other. You got two hands, but I guarantee you, if you're holding on to Jesus with your right hand and holding on to sin with your left hand, your left hand going to lose its grip or your right hand going to lose its grip. You can't hold both of them because they're going to rip it. They're going to pull at you. The flesh pulls at the spirit. The spirit pulls at the flesh like a tug of war. You in the middle. It's a tug of war. You in the middle, and they pull him. They want to see who's going to pull you across the line. Jesus want to pull you across the line to his side, but you're holding on to the sins and, and, and you're not letting go of the sin. When you let go of the sin, Jesus pull you on over here and say, look, this is much better than being over there. Don't go over there. Like you tell everybody, come on, be healed. Go and sin no more. Your sins are forgiven you. Don't sin anymore. Jesus said it a couple of times. He said, he said, go and sin no more. You can do it. I can do it. We can do it. They did it. They did it. They turned away from their sin. And, G and, 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 and the word of God says, says, if you're born of God, you can't sin. All that means is you falling short. You ain't even under that law anymore. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. According to the spirit. For what the law could not do, the spirit did it. In that the law was weak to the flesh, and God did it, sending his only begotten son, so that on account of sin, Jesus could die for sin. That's why Jesus came to die for sin. And who's and who better to die for than us, the sinners? Huh? That's love. This is love that God loved us. Not that we love God, but that God loved us. God loved us way before we loved him. And he said we all love each other. They said we all love him. Huh? Some people are still waiting to turn to the Lord because they're waiting for the right time. The right time is now. There's no better time to turn to the Lord than right now. You're not going to get yourself together. And you, if you wait until you get yourself together before you turn to the Lord, you are going to never turn to the Lord. <laughs> If you wait until you get it together, you're never going to turn to the Lord. You got to come to God how you are. You got to come. He said, come, all you who are heavy laden. You're burning yourself down with the world, with the sin. We're trying to please the world, trying to please the flesh. We're trying to please God in a fleshly manner. When Jesus just say, just come to me just like you are, and I'm going to take away that burden. You take my burden. You, you come and surrender to me. Instead of letting the world be your king and your master, you come to me and let me, you allow me to dictate how you live. I'm already your king. I'm already your master, whether you want me to be or not. But what you need to do is surrender to me. That's what Jesus is saying. 
He your master. He your Lord. He your king. He's your God, whether you surrender to him or not. See what I'm saying? And the be, and truth be told, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess to Jesus Christ that he's Lord, to the glory of God the Father, whether you want to or not. Whether you do it in this life or whether you do it in the next life, everybody's going to bow down. Everybody's going to confess Jesus Lord. But there are some who are not going to make it into the everlasting life in paradise because they didn't do it when they had the opportunity to do so. And we all have an opportunity. So there's no better time than the opportunity that you've been given right now while the blood is still running warm to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, if you have already done so, now is the best time to help others do the same. See, if you already came to Jesus, if you are already saved from your sins, from the penalty of sin, from the power of sin, you know what I'm saying? You overcome, you know, if you later on waiting on the presence of sin to be gone all together, you waiting on that glorious day so that Jesus busts through the clouds and you go with them. Guess what? Now it's time for you to help others get the same thing. Unless you hate everybody. If you hate everybody and you don't want nobody else being saved but you, then don't go help anybody else get saved. Tell them I said it. If somebody say, well, preacher told me this, pastor told me that, Ed told me that. If you hate everybody else, if you don't want anybody else to get saved but you, well, then don't tell anybody else and about Jesus and don't help anybody else get saved if that's how you feel. Now, <laughs> if that's how you feel, but I don't, I, I don't think that's even possible for you to be saved by Jesus and to hate everybody else because the scripture says, if God so loved us, we also ought to love each other. See, and once you realize that God loved you and saved you, you love everybody else and you want them to be saved too. You know what I'm saying? Amen. So if we're saved, it's time to get everybody else saved. <clears throat> However you can do that. And that's the point of life. The point of life is living in a way, living in a way approved of by God so that he will gift us with eternal life. Living this life for God's approval and receiving the gift of eternal life. Now, God's approval is not go and do this and go and do that, walk according to these commands. And God's saying, this is what God's saying. All he wants is for us to Come to Jesus, surrender our will, our control, our way of thinking, and our sins to the Lord Jesus. That's what God wants. He wants us to come to the king, the master, the Lord, the savior, and surrender our will, our control, our way of thinking, our mind, our sins to Jesus Christ. That's what the Lord God wants us to do. Give it all to him. He wants it all today. There's a song in my, there's a song I hear. I'm not going to try to sing it, <laughs> but he wants it all today. He wants it all. God wants it all. He wants all of you. He wants all of you, every part of you, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, to the innermost chamber of your heart, to the smallest corner of your brain, your thoughts, your dreams. God wants you. All of you, surrender it all to God. Help others surrender it all to God that we may be saved because that's the whole purpose of this life, to be saved from the stuff that the devil has put in, the, from, the, from, the, from the wrenches he has thrown in the machine, the logs he has thrown in the fire, and the, and the dark blankets of clouds that he covered our eyes with, to be saved from those things. That's what God wants for us. For me, you, him, her, them, and all of us. Let's do God's will. Let's make that the goal. To get as great many people saved, to get a great many people believing, to get a great many people turning away from their sin, to get a great many people turning to the Lord and being saved. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word this morning, God. Lord God, I thank you, Lord, that you saved me, man. I thank you, Lord, that you saved me, Lord. I thank you that you saved my family. The ones who are alive, the ones who are the ones who have passed, Lord. I thank you, God, that you brought us up in the word of God so that we came back to it, Lord God. And I pray for my family who are not saved yet. That you would go ahead and save them, God. I got faith, God, that 
that they're going to be saved, God. I mean, I I know it's all on them, Lord God. I can't have faith for them, Lord God, but I have faith in you, Lord God, to work it out for them. Work it all out together, Lord God, for their good. And there's no greater good than their salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for salvation. It's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, all right, all right. All right, that's it for Morning Cup of Jesus. I went way over. Hey, <laughs> well, it must have been the Lord's will. If the Lord is willing, if it's the Lord's will, we're going to be right back here tomorrow morning around the same time. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you. Enjoy your day.